Rated E10 for ages 10 and up. Curves are a manipulation of how your joystick input is reflected in game. Response curves aren't for everyone, but they are for those who don't mind the trade-off where you can give up control accuracy in one area to gain it elsewhere. We can bring up our curves by right-clicking on the screen, clicking on Options, and then clicking on Responses. By default, all aircraft are controlled by one set of response curves. However, we can alter these curves for aircraft individually, and for this example I'm going to use the Fokker DR1. So I find the Fokker DR1, click on it, and then I ensure that the Use All Planes Responses box is unchecked. The first part we'll look at is the drop-down menu, which separates the response curves into its different axes. The main ones you will be concerned with are Pitch, Roll, and Yaw. For this video, I'm going to select Pitch, so I can show how the elevator will change deflection depending on your curve. Now we'll look at the Symmetry button, because that's pretty important to use if you have a Roll or a Yaw curve. By having symmetry enabled, it means we only have to adjust one side of the curve and it will be reflected on the other side. So now I'm going to reset the curve to be linear and then we can uncheck symmetry so we can see how our joystick input is reflected in game. As you can see here, the device input is on the X axis and the output in game is on the Y axis. So this way we can look at a linear curve as X equals Y making the joystick input equaling the in game output. So what I've done here is I've changed the in-game output value, y, to have a new deflection point for when the joystick is centered, or when x equals zero. Pitch curves such as this one are useful to relieve the forward pressure required to fly level at full power by some aircraft. So now instead of having x equals zero, y equals zero, I now have x equals zero, y equals minus 40, giving me a new elevated deflection point when my joystick is centered. Now if I start moving my joystick through range of motion for pitch, we can see that the percentages are not equal. This is because we now have a non-linear curve. And because we changed the initial output value downwards, we can see the added effect of decreasing accuracy in the lower range of motion for the joystick, while increasing accuracy in its higher range of motion. OK, so to quickly reiterate the effect of what we did, let's have a look at the elevated deflection. We have our altered point of elevated deflection here, so let's change it back to the linear one and see what effect it has. So going back to pitch, I make it a linear line, and then we click apply, and then we can see that the elevator deflection is a lot less. Now we'll look at adding an S-curve for yaw control. So to add an S-curve, we have to click on the drop-down and bring up yaw, and then we hit S-curve. Now bear in mind, this is just a default, and you are able to manipulate this as you see fit. You can see the extra accuracy gained at the initial range of motion, because you make more joystick input for less in-game output. These curves can be customized further by clicking on the line to add more points which you can then drag around to make a smoother curve if you wish. We should ensure though that symmetry is on so we only have to make changes to one side of the curve. By adding these points it makes an overall smoother response which helps avoid any drastic output changes as any joystick inputs are made. So with this curve you can see that I've moved through 66% of my joystick's range of motion while only moving through 30% of the in-game range of motion available. This has the effect of giving higher accuracy to our movements initially with the rudder, but once we hit the back end of the curve, we lose this accuracy because that last 40% of our joystick range of motion accounts for the remaining 70% of in-game range of motion. Another curve option is adding a dead zone. What you do is by dragging this slider left or right, you add a dead zone which effectively removes any input from your joystick for that region. This is useful for people whose joysticks seem to give small random inputs, called spiking, even if their joystick, rudder, or throttle is centered. Keep in mind, however, that using a dead zone will reduce your overall accuracy because you are not using part of your joystick's range of motion. That's what you need to know about curves to get started. Thanks for watching.